Congresswoman Marinette Miller-Meeks is back from the southern border. We'll talk about her plan to test all migrants for COVID-19 and what Congress should do with so many children crossing the border. Plus, the Iowa vaccine guy. He's helping people find vaccination appointments. Will the state be ready when all adults are eligible for the vaccine? And in the Insider's Quick 6, how to stop the hate against Asian American neighbors. From your local election headquarters, this is the Insiders with Dave Price. Let's go inside Iowa. Iowa's first term Congresswoman Mary Nett Miller Meeks joined a dozen other House Republicans to visit El Paso, Texas. There's been a surge in migrants seeking asylum as they cross the southern border. Here's what the Congresswoman told us about what she saw during that trip. The things that we learned that I think is very important is that with this surge that's coming across the border currently. So in the month of February alone, over 100,000 people have made it across the border uh, or come into our country. Uh, they're not being tested for COVID-19. Uh, they don't have the, uh, uh, the wherewithal to do that. But importantly, this is vastly increased from the same number in uh, 2019. So it's even an increase of 23% from January and February is not typically the time when they have the surge. Usually the surge is in um, uh, April and May. So at a point in time when we have uh, a surge, they have uh, out, um, you know, their uh, facility as is at capacity. It was only built last year. Um, so it's important that we understand that the border patrol wasn't funded for this amount of individuals coming across. So they're using their own operational budget in order to provide food and clothing and you know, diapers, other things for unaccompanied minors and for families that are coming across the border. So that was an important thing to learn because then we can advocate uh, for funding for the Border Patrol, um, which did not have any funding in this current COVID package. So should we, and primarily most of those coming across are minors, from what I understand. So do we need, should Congress better fund these efforts or should we be not allowing these children to come across? I think it's, it's a two-pronged uh, question and, and two-pronged response. And that is, number one, uh, certainly the Border Patrol should be funded. And knowing how many people were coming across the border, uh, that should have been within the, the COVID uh, relief package that uh, President Biden put across. Number two, we should not be sending a message that the borders are open, anybody can come over and come over now. I think that's a dangerous precedent we set. Uh, these individuals, um, certainly I know uh, some of them are, are asking for amnesty and come from, uh, you know, violent circumstances, violent areas uh, in Central America. But the communities that they go to don't even know that these individuals are arriving. So we're in the middle of a pandemic. You have people that aren't being tested. Uh, there were 108 documented uh, uh, COVID positive tests in Brownsville where uh, individuals went. They come into the facility by law. The unaccompanied minors can only stay there by 72 hours. Some are staying longer than 72 hours. But again, they're not being tested for COVID-19. Then they're sent to a community in the interior. And these border communities and other communities aren't equipped to handle them, especially when their budgets have already been strained during the pandemic. So, um, you know, a two response question. We need comprehensive immigration reform. We've talked about it before. Uh, there were bills that were put forward in the last uh, Congress, but it's something that we need to address uh, and we need to, uh, you know, encourage legal immigration. When you think about it in this manner, legally, we allow um, one million uh, people to come into our country a year. In the month of February alone, there were more than 100,000 people coming in illegally uh, that were processed through the uh, border processing facilities. And if you have that same pace for the rest of the year, you will have as many people coming into the country illegally as legally. The president has talked about telling people not to come right now. So who is sending the message that people should come across here? Well, I think if you uh, if you go back uh, during the summer uh, and fall of the campaign season and during the presidential debates, um, they, uh, President Biden uh, said that, you know, health care would be offered to illegal immigrants. Uh, and that illegal immigrants should come and the borders will be open. So I think that message, uh, some of the migrants that are coming across are wearing shirts that say, um, you know, Biden on them. So I think that that's a message. And I think it's important for people to understand how they come here. 
The other things we learned from the agents uh, was that the uh, cartels smuggle people across, they get paid to bring people in, and this is millions and millions of dollars. And they also use diversionary tactics of having large groups of uh, migrants storm the border. They, the road goes right behind the fence uh, in El Paso. They drop them off at that road, have groups of you know, 80 or 100 people storm the border at one place and then bring other things across uh, in another location. Um, and the border wall, the other thing they told us was that on um, midnight of January 20th, the border wall that was already funded was stopped. It was stopped immediately. There was already funding for that border wall. So now you have contracts that we may have to honor. You have a wall that's not built. And it's not just the wall barrier, but the technology that comes with the wall that they thought was very helpful. So there's um, underground detection for trimmers. There's video surveillance. There are sensors to detect motion. All of those things stopped at the time that the border wall stopped. Um, well, the agents we talked to were very supportive of the policies that were put in place by the previous administration. And they're especially concerned that Title uh, 42 uh, will go away. And that's uh, something that allows them to look at immigrants, turn them back to Mexico, um, and then to seek asylum. So these are policies that they think were very helpful, that helped them to manage what happened at the border. And right now, you have a surge in a month that you typically don't have a surge. So I think that's problematic. The border uh, CBP is not funded for this. Um, they're working extremely hard, very diligently. These are compassionate people trying to do their best to secure our borders uh, and compassionately treat those individuals that are coming here. So you sponsored this, this resolution in the House talking about that we need to test those who are coming across here. So what happens if a migrant is test positive? What happens to that person? If they test positive, they don't, they're not allowed to enter the country. And that's why these agreements that were in place before are so very important. Um, Mexico now doesn't want to take them back if they test positive for COVID-19, understandably. But they just came through Mexico to get here. Um, and again, I think you have to look at how many lives does it put at risk of those trying to come across the border illegally? And how many lives does it put at risk when you're transporting these individuals uh, to another facility and then those individuals uh, in the community in which they live. So I think testing is important. Quarantine them while you test them. And those, you know, you have to address that when you have a policy that says, uh, come across, we're going to let you in and we're going to give you health care. You need to think about that ahead of time and make those arrangements so that you can test people and quarantine them uh, if they test positive. You've talked about the need for a bipartisan solution to this problem, and that has been elusive for decades for Congress. It was not bipartisan during the last administration. What, what would be in this current administration with the current makeup of, the, of Congress, what would be something that you would agree with Democrats on to address this issue? Well, I think, First of all, we have to be able to have the conversation and to meet across the aisle and talk in a bipartisan way. And this really comes from the top. Culture comes from the top. Leadership comes from the top. So if President Biden signals that he's willing to work in a bipartisan fashion, then I'm sure that that will help both Speaker Pelosi and, um, and uh, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer to come together so that and get their members together, along with the minority members, uh, to get their members together. They're, conferences together to talk about immigration in a bipartisan fashion. She'll be back a bit later for the Quick Six, including when the uncertainty will end about her six-vote election victory last November. But first, the Iowa City man determined to help you get a COVID-19 vaccine. 